That was the door closing. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to check out our Pepcom booth uh, and checking out some of our latest products that we are announcing at this CES. I'm Kelly Corrigan. I am a product technologist at Lenovo, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of our latest ThinkPad products. And then after that, I will throw it over to my colleague, Michael, and he is going to show you some of our upcoming consumer products that we're announcing here at CES. So let's just jump into it. So first up, we have an extension of our ThinkPad X1 flagship line. So this is the X1 Titanium Yoga. Now, this is the thinnest ThinkPad that we have ever launched. Um, if you look straight on, you can see just how thin this is. If I hold up a quarter, again, that kind of demonstrates just how thin of a product this really is. Um, it is built and optimized to be a detachable killer. So this is really meant for somebody who wants the portability of a detachable, but doesn't wanna deal with keeping track of a keyboard and where they put it once they actually detach it. So as opposed to being able to detach this, you can flip this around like so. Um, so this is roughly the size of an A4 sheet of paper. So it is built around this 13.5 inch display. So this is a 16 um, by 10 display screen. And one of the greatest things about this is that you don't have to compromise with the keyboard when it's folded flat. So if I hold it this way here, you can see that there's no gap between um, the screen and the back of the system there, uh, as there would be sometimes, you know, when you were full using a convertible. So another advantage of the X1 Titanium Yoga is the optional full-size magnetic pen. So unfortunately, but also kind of fortunately, the X1 Titanium Yoga is so thin that we wouldn't be able to fit a garaged pen um, on there. So let's see if I can find the magnetic spot. Where is it? Um, so that allows us to actually use a full-size pen with this and it does magnetically attach to the side. Um, fortunately, I just can't find that right now. Uh, most of our ThinkPads actually have the garaged pen in there, um, but that is really meant for more sporadic inking. So because this is a full-sized pen, it is going to be much more comfortable for all day use. Um, and then something else you may be wondering about is, okay, why is this called the X1 Titanium Yoga? You already have an X1 Yoga, what's the deal with that? So it is named the X1 Titanium Yoga because we have added titanium in the top cover here. So that allows us to be super thin but also keep our ThinkPad systems very rugged as well. And now over here, I have one that is opened up here. And so one of the things that we had to do was we had to engineer the system because it is so thin. Um, typically with laptops, you have a lot of components inside that stack on top of each other to accommodate for the space and size. But for this, we had to find a way to make it so all of the components are laying side by side instead of being stacked on top of each other. And then lastly, one of the things that we did was we added Dolby Voice to this product for better voice communication um, in this work from anywhere environment. So you can very easily tweak your microphone settings to pick up your voice or several voices in the room more clearly. So next up, I have a couple more devices here. Um, these are part of our flagship line that have been redesigned. So this is our X1 Carbon and then our X1 Yoga. And again, we are moving on to this return to a 16 by 10 screen ratio to add a little bit more um, verticality to your display. And we were able to do this without any additional weight or thickness to the system. So we added that 16 by 10 panel in there. And we've also decreased the systems to a four-sided narrow display. So again, much more um, usability for the footprint of that um, system. And on both the carbon and yoga, one of the other things that we've done on both of them 
is that we've combined the power button as well as the fingerprint reader. So that is something that's going to help simplify the user experience, um, as well as keeping the aesthetics of the system a little bit cleaner. You know, you're only dealing with just one button that logs you all the way in, first having to power the system on and then log in on a different button. Now with the X1 Carbon, we've taken advantage of the chassis to support um, 5G as an option. And we've added this one bar hinge here, and that allows us to um, use that for those 5G antennas, but also that now allows us to exhaust out the rear of the system for um, the rear of the chassis to help with thermal management. And of course, because this is a carbon, you're getting all of the performance that you would expect from ThinkPad. And one of the things about the carbon, uh, the carbon that we're known for is the fact that it has all of your typical ports that you expect from a ThinkPad system um, in a much slimmer package. And again, this is only 2.5 pounds, so something that's still very slim and white, lightweight to carry around. And then some of the changes that we made to the X1 Yoga in particular. We introduced this new CNC aluminum chassis um, design a couple years ago, um, and we have continued on with this design. So um, previously we had black keys in here. Um, we've changed that to now have this tonally matched um, gray keyboard as well. So um, it just makes it a little bit more overall aesthetic of a system. And then moving on to the X12 detachable. Now you heard me talk a little bit about the X1 titanium and how um, their people don't want to keep track of the keyboard um, while detaching it. And while that is something that is very true, there are a very um, enthusiastic people who prefer this form factor. Now, this system is a part of our X series, so it has a much more mainstream price point than our flagship systems, such as our X1 series. So this is a 12.3 inch screen, and it is optimized around portability. So one of the things that we did to keep this system portable, but still functional, was that we looked at different footprint sizes that would deliver an ideal keyboard experience while typing. So with this, um, with this size here, you're not going to have that sort of cramping while typing um, experience that you would on a much smaller system. And that's a pain point a lot of people have while trying to go for the most portable, smallest system that they can. They're really sacrificing that keyboard real estate. Um, but with this, we feel we found a really good balance here with this system. And then, of course, if I close that up, you can see the kickstand on here as well. And so that is all I have to say about the X12. Um, something that we announced this fall, but maybe you didn't get a chance to check out yet is the X1 Nano. So the X1 Nano is a 13 inch system that weighs only two pounds. And again, we are continuing on with this trend of moving back to that 16 by 10 screen ratio um, with this system. So it is a part of the Intel Evo platform with a 2K display, and it has all of the performance capabilities that you would expect from ThinkPad, just in a much smaller footprint. So right now, if I go over and grab an X1 Carbon here, just to be able to show you the difference in footprint and stack them like so, you can see that the X1 Nano is a much smaller package here and how it is much more compact but again, still offers that same great ThinkPad performance there. So that is all from me for now. I am going to turn it over to my colleague, Michael, to talk a little bit about our latest consumer products. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. So for those of you who have just joined, um, <clears throat> my name is Michael Grimsley. I'm a product technologist with Lenovo. I'm going to take you through some of our consumer products that we've uh, recently announced. 
And if you have any questions during this, feel free to put them in the chat or we'll have a short Q&A after this presentation. So feel free to ask uh, af after the presentation. So the first product I wanna take you through today is our Yoga AIO 7. Now, um, when you first look at this, you'll notice the fabric cover JBL speakers in the front and the large 27 inch 4K display. Now, this display hits 99% uh, DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB color gamut. So anybody who's cons uh, concerned with color space, uh, they'll have exactly what they need with this all-in-one. Um, <clears throat> but my favorite feature about this uh, is the rotatable hinge. So with a simple press of the finger, you can completely rotate this into portrait mode. So whether you're using this for you know, coding or reading a web page, or if you're just gonna cast you know, some content from your phone, uh, it's nice to be able to rotate this into portrait mode and not have to necessarily have a second mod or anything hooked up. Now, when we rotate this around to the sides, we'll go through a couple of the ports. You can see you have uh, power. You have a few buttons here to control your monitor input settings. And when I rotate it around to the other side, you can see we have headphone jack, USB, type C, which uh, this all-in-one will also be able to pair up with, say, any laptop you connect with it, and you can share content between the hard drives on your laptop and the all-in-one if you so choose. Uh, while I have it here, I also want to point out that it has a 20-degree tilt, so you can lean this all-in-one back and get the perfect angle that you want. And when I rotate this around to the back, you'll see a few more of the ports. you got uh, more USB, Ethernet, power, and a nice clean aesthetic overall for the back of the system. Now, while the Yoga AIO 7 is going to be a, a great all-in-one for the home, it's something that you might not want to pack up every time you, you take this to the coffee shop. So for users looking for something more portable, we'll take a look at the IdeaPad 5G. Now, the idea of Pad 5G, as the name implies, is 5G and 4G LTE connectivity. And uh, so I'll always be connected whether, you know, you're at home or if there's no Wi-Fi, uh, you know, you just, you're always on, just like a, a phone connection. Um, <clears throat> now, from the, the top, you'll see the, the silver colorway. But when I open this up, the first thing you'll notice are the top firing speakers. So... What's nice about that is sound is always going to be directed up and at you, uh, so you don't have to worry about being muffled depending on the surface it's laying on. Um, <clears throat> and when I close this and take a look at the ports along the side, you'll see you have USB, power, micro, uh, or SIM, SIM slot, rotate it around, and you've got two more Type-C and a headphone jack. But what I really want to point out is that you'll notice this is an entirely fanless design. And that's thanks to the Qualcomm 8CX processor. Now, with the Qualcomm 8CX processor, uh, you'll also be able to expect some great battery life overall to the system. And keeping with the theme of portability, I'm going to move on to another product here, the Tab P11. Now, the Tab P11 is an 11 inch, uh, has 11 inch 2K display and it hits 400 nits. So this is the, when you view content on this, uh, anything's gonna be bright, vivid and crisp. Uh, and to match that visual experience, when you look around on the sides, you've got uh, four speakers along, along the edges uh, and these are optimized with Dolby Atmos. So again, sound is gonna be, uh, you'll have some great sound coming out of this. Um, if you don't have headphones connected or anything like that, you don't have to worry about it. When I rotate this around to the back, <clears throat> you'll notice the aluminum dual tone design. And uh, I think it has a, a personally a very classy look uh, overall to it. And speaking of class, I've got a couple accessories that might interest you if you wanted to use the Tab P11 for school or uh, maybe for, for work. So the first one is the back soft touch uh, cover back. It has a built-in kickstand. So that way you can easily set this up right when you're on the go. And the attachable uh, keyboard here. So this attaches via pogo pins, which is great. So if you, uh, you don't have to worry about 
you know, pairing or unpairing the Bluetooth connection on the keyboard. Uh, you just plug it up and, and you're ready to go. But if you're more of a, uh, a writer than a typer, uh, we also have the Lenovo Precision Pen 2, and that hits 4,096 points of pressure sensitivity. So whether you're wanting to use TAP-P11 for, uh, TAP for <clears throat> you know, work or for, for play, uh, you know, we have you covered on this. The last product I have for you today is something a little bit different. This is the Levy Mini. It's an eight inch laptop. And, um, you know, but before I continue, I wanna say that this is a concept prototype device. So we're not gonna have any, any pricing or availability for this quite yet, uh, but I think it's something interesting nonetheless. So it's an eight inch uh, laptop here. When I open it up, uh, at the top, you've got uh, IR camera for Windows Hello. But inside is where uh, you still have a lot of power. So you have Intel i7 um, <clears throat> processor. Uh, you have 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory and M.2 storage. So um, despite its size, it still has plenty of power for both productivity and even some light gaming. And <clears throat> part of the reason why I mentioned games is because we have a couple interesting accessories that uh, go along with the Levy Mini. The first one is the optional docking station. So uh, all you need to do is simply flip the Levy around and you can slide it into the dock. Now this allows a convenient way to charge the device, but when you rotate it around, <clears throat> you still have a few extra USB ports, um, power and then HDMI that's capable of 4K at 60 frames per second. So if you wanted to use this for your TV, maybe do some light gaming, uh, it's fully capable of, of connecting up to, to your home entertainment center. But if you, uh, you know, for an eight inch device, you, you definitely want to use this for, for possibly travel. Um, we have another interesting device and that's the optional gaming pad accessory. So you can simply slide the Livy into this and you have a full uh, game controller here and it shares a similar layout to many other game controllers you might be familiar with, um, <clears throat> including your, your left and right bumpers and triggers. So you don't have to bother about you know, learning a new format or anything, but if you wanna do some gaming on the go, uh, especially on a Windows device, this is, uh, gives you some options to, to really get that done. And so that covers the products I have for you today. Uh, for uh, now we'll move on to general Q and A. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, and then we'll also post up the schedule. So if you missed part of these demos or just want to, you know, think everything was so great, you want to see it again, um, we'll have a schedule up too where you can see the next times for, for demos. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michael and Kelly. So do we have any questions from the audience? Hi. So I was wondering the, the 5G idea pad, is there a price on that one? Yes. All right. <laughs> but you're not uh, yet, uh, because as far as I understand, yeah, yeah, it's, no, uh, no. it's an I, affordable I, one, right? It's a more it, affordable 5G laptop. Uh, yeah. 799 euros. 799, yeah. And that's, uh, I think last year we announced the idea pad, uh, uh, flex or yoga 5G, depending, I guess, I guess in Europe, it's the yoga 5G. And that's roughly double the price. And it's using the 8CX uh, Gen 2 or the Gen 1 or? Gen 1, Gen part 1. of the cost savings. And uh, the X1 Nano, isn't that um, uh, also a little bit in the family of the La Vie, a little bit the collaboration with NEC to get this super ultra low, low weight and compact uh, ThinkPad made? Or do you say something about that or? No. <laughs> the, the think bad people would be appalled that, that ah, um no that, I, actually that, that there was no direct collaboration between the 
NEC Levy team and on the X1 Nano, but the the gentleman who runs both development teams is one person. He's actually based here in uh, in North Carolina in, in our our area. So they are overall part of the same development team, but I don't think there was any specific collaboration on those 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 two products. That X1 Nano is is it hitting a point where it's ultra high performance and like uh, maybe a record you're, like in you're, terms you're right of... they're both they're both Tiger Lake based systems and really small form factors um, and the X1 Nano is uh, uh, it's also shipping now I I mean I the 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 non-touch version is on the market. The, the touch version will, will be out um, not too much longer. I'll per personally probably use that system. I, I think we've gone, should have gone to a smaller form. Even fact, smaller. Back to a form factor for, for a while, personally. But it's still like 13 inch, right? It's the just still right, but, but actually most of the most of the ThinkPad other all the other ThinkPads are 14 and a 13 inch chassis, but they're they're still there. We haven't had a 13 inch panel, I think, from maybe the first uh, X1 Carbon. I think it was 13. 15. We haven't had a 13 inch panel for a while, so that helps on the on the footprint. So the X1 Carbon Gen 8. Uh, is is very anticipated. Can you explain a little bit more in terms of what's new with the new eighth generation? Well, this will be Gen nine. That Gen nine. Oh, Gen, yeah. that, that you just talked about. Um, let's see. I don't know if somebody else is on the the line that's a little more of an expert, but we've gone to a new sixteen by ten panel. Um, that in fact that's new for for uh, started with a nano, but also for the X1 Carbon, the X1 Yoga, and um, let's see, the X1 Titanium doesn't, it, it's three by two, it's a little bit different. So so new panels, um, I think they've increased the, the battery capacity a little bit. There's uh, presence detection, um, trying to think, think what else, I don't know if anybody else is um, looking at the, at the info. I guess the latest Intel is bringing the latest Intel performance, right? And the, um, on those new ones. Yeah, uh, it, I, I think, you know, part of the embargo uh, for today is based on the uh, V Pro version of, of the, the, the platform. Um, but yeah, they're all latest like Tiger Lake across, across the board. And X1 Titanium has the same performance, just in the Titanium uh, build? Yeah, I don't think, I, I mean, we haven't run any numbers here yet. Um, and I haven't looked at what the development team has. <clears throat> um, I mean, that remains to be seen. It's a much thinner chassis, right? So there's cooling and so on and so forth. Um, I, I, so I, I can't. I can't say, yeah, exactly the, the same until, until we get there, so to speak. So, so they're quite different in terms of the uh, thickness. I don't know whether you guys have the, one of the other guys on the Lenovo team have the <clears throat> dimensions of carbon versus titanium. Yeah, the, uh, I believe the carbon is about, you know, 17.7 milli millimeters thick and then uh, the titanium is uh, 11.5 millimeters. So, you know, it's a good 25% thinner. So um, as Jeff said, uh, you know, the, the reasonable expectation is for there to be a little bit less thermal headroom in the titanium. I guess it's the material of the titanium that's very optimal and very high performance and good for cooling and everything. I guess that's one of the properties, right? Of titanium material. Uh, I, I think the, the main property is, you know, the uh, durability of titanium um, and the, the weight. Those are the, the big ones. I think uh, as far as um, our whole X, X1 lineup, uh, we've, we've been able to perfect that, you know, the thermals on just the, you know, 
the carbon fiber um, hybrid hybrid material. So uh, we've done a really good job with that already. And then the titanium just as on another layer of uh, uniqueness. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and part of the, you know, part of the philosophy behind the titanium is, as Sam says, to have that protective titanium layer on top because we're super thin. Why be super thin or why still have the X1 yoga, so on and so forth. What we're trying to achieve with that product is a, another, uh, an alternative to the detachable. Meaning um, while we're announcing a detachable form factor today, which also gives us the flexibility to offer people tablet only or attaching the keyboard, we find that most people in the marketplace that uses use detachables never take the keyboard off, right? It's always connected. And so the titanium is in some way a, a, a building on that. And because it uses the 3.2 screen ratio because it mirrors a piece of paper, right? So all the other convertibles or yoga form factors so far today, um, people say that's great, great to have flexibility, but to actually use as a, as a platform for pen all the time, it could either be too, too thick or too heavy. If when you get a chance to look at it closely, you know, a lot of two in ones have kind of that duck bill form factor. Um, when you connect the two, the titanium is completely flat. So it's not just to be thin for the sake of being thin, but to, to offer a, a specific customer solution. Um, as far as the differences, going back to your questions about the carbon, so on and so forth, I probably can send you uh, a table that shows the Gen 8 and then Gen 9, what, what the differences are. Either I answered your question, you're very excited, or, or you don't believe in it. <laughs> no, no, I'm excited. No, it's great. <laughs> I was just thinking maybe there's some other people also wanting to ask questions, right? Maybe. Uh, how about La Vie? Is it, is it just a, a demo that you're showing like this, or it's actually really uh, being launched? Uh, I mean, uh, going to be available? Because uh, it looks quite spectacular with all these uh, gaming features and everything. So NEC and, and the Levy line, uh, as a, you know, clearly comes out of Japan, right? And, and if you looked at some of the, uh, the way that keyboard was laid out and the use of the round key, keys and then the track pad, there was a, a, um, a, a, a touch sensor, not unlike the old blackberry days um that's a real it's being designed in japan that that's a they're really looking heavily at that market for that product um how widespread it'll come uh, it remains to be seen but right now we don't have the earliest it could launch would be it'd be over six months from now so we don't have any pricing or availability and so on and so forth. But you're right, it's pretty far along. And how about the X12? What's the thinking in, in uh, why is it called the X12? Uh, is it the uh, same family as the X1, but with a two added on, to, on top? Okay, so I think it's been, we, we used to have a product called the ThinkPad uh, X1 tablet, right? But we have not, but we've continued to sell it we have not uh, rev that product for a couple of years. So, and it's the detachable form factor made popular by Microsoft Surface and so on and so forth. And though they dominate that part of the market, actually it's a very tiny part of the, the, the actual sales of, of, of laptops or uh, two-in-ones or, or detachables. So um, we, we haven't invested a lot in that form factor, obviously, for the last couple of years. Um, but we have brought it back because it does serve some part of the market. People, some people want that form factor, but they're also very interested in tablet-only scenarios with no keyboard and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, based on demand, and uh, we, we thought it was the right time to kind of reimagine that product 
and, and bring it to, to, to market. Um, like I said earlier, in regards to the titanium, that was in response to the fact that people never take the keyboard off. Well, for those people who want to or must because they're doing some sort of walking around pen only application, um, that's what that product's for. And we didn't follow on with the same naming of um, X1 tablet because we wanted to make it very clear it wasn't a tablet only solution that it was a detachable product. And, uh, and that all-in-one, it flips up like this. Is it a, a consideration that some people might have multiple screens and maybe they could combine that with a 4K display on their desktop or something? And they might have one that's upright for Twitter, something like that? Yeah, well, good. I, I, if, if you could see behind me and behind this, this fake wall that I have, um, you would see there are some uh, setups where people have done exactly what you're talking about, where, where they... They have their main display landscape and then they have a, because that's a natural way to read right and that's the way web pages are are laid out and so on and so forth and then um i'm not the target audience to appreciate this but there's also been a lot of talk of it being uh, a good fit for TikTok videos and so on and so forth. right jordan She's on mute, but she's a uh, TikTok creator, just so you know. <laughs> she's laughing. Oh, Jeff, <laughs> put me on the spot here. Well, I'm doing all the talking, so I figured someone, they'd, they'd rather hear from someone else. Hey, hey, Ross. Hey, Jeff. Happy I was wondering morning. why you didn't ask me about TikTok, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> we're, all, we're all friends. I, I was build, building up to it. <laughs> mm. uh, I was, I was is that you won? Oh, it is. Yeah, I just want to say hi to everybody. <laughs> oh, not a Lenovo cup. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, well, we, we can work on that if you want yeah. to send over a um, Lenovo I don't cup. think we sent any out, which would, might be a good idea. <laughs> Did we lose Ross? No, no, I'm still here. Oh, okay. So on the um, uh, the five G uh, idea pad, I think um, uh, is is so. You guys have already you, you already did a five G yoga. So what it, what is and you know that was a, a convertible, so it works pretty well as a clamshell. So um, what's what's some of the thinking after doing a lot of um, avant garde? Um, by, you know, a couple of avant-garde 5G designs uh, going to a traditional clamshell. Anybody else want to take it? Th take that one, or I, I, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's cost. Uh huh. And that I was telling one of the other folks on the call earlier. It, it, I don't have U.S. pricing. There's European pricing, but it's roughly half the cost. Oh wow. Of the I think you, when you looked at it, it was the Flex 5G and in Europe, yes. it's Noga 5G and so on and so forth. So um, it, it's all about affordability, accessibility, and kind of starting, trying to start to create a stack. A lot of the ThinkPads that uh, we, we were just talking about, X1 Carbon, X1 Yoga, uh, Titanium, not the detachable, are all 5G capable as well, and the X1 Nano from, from a couple months ago. So we're, we're just trying to start to propagate that across form factors, but also at different price points as well. Mm -hmm. is, um, do, you, do you see that one going through carrier distribution as well, or is it uh, unlocked or? Uh, yeah, don't I, don't, I, I, I guess I would have to ask. Uh, it typically in, in EMEA, of course, of course, there's a much bigger attach rate for uh, broadband in general, um, my my guess is that it would uh, go through carriers there. That's usually a, kind of a more arduous task here in the in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, getting carrier certifications and so on and so forth. There aren't any public U.S. plans for it now, so okay. Um, it 
my guess would be it, it, uh, it would probably start on like Lenovo.com or something in an unlocked basis, unless they swing some some deal. It's right, sub, right. Sub six, so it's, it's okay. Not a, not a Verizon. Okay, that's Verizon good. deal. Uh, the IdeaPad 5G is a is a yoga style, no, with touch and everything. Also, right? Is a or is isn't it? I don't think it's a convertible. And no, I, it's I think not. it has a touch, but it, it doesn't. Just the clamp no, shell. 360. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you guys been to any of the other booths in Pepcom? What other booths? <laughs> Good answer, Ross. Good answer. <laughs> Should be Lenovo.com or Pepovo or something. <laughs> <that's> a, <laughs> Pepovo. <laughs> I just wondered if there was anything else interesting, but also, uh, you know, the technology wise, uh, we tried to up our game from last time where we just logged into Zoom and, uh, you know, be able to actually do, try and do some actual product demos. Yeah, so we're gonna answer a couple more questions and then um, let our technologists take a quick um, break and we'll come back at three o'clock. Um, our next round of demos will be at 3.15. So if um, you've missed them, if you've just logged on and you want to, um, Go take a look at what else is Pepcom's offering with some of the other exhibitors and come back at 2.15 for the next round of demos. We'd love to have you back. Okay, 